Time for another five minute ish review. Twenty fourteen's dark was the night. A nearby logging operation sends an as of yet undiscovered predator into the forest surrounding the small town of Maiden Woods. Soon livestock goes missing and mysterious bipedal hoof prints are discovered throughout the town. The local sheriff assumes everything is all a hoax at first, but when he and his deputy have a close encounter with the creature, they realize that it is indeed real and it may be more intelligent than anything else in the woods, and it may see them as a threat that needs eliminating. The sheriff has to put his own personal demons behind him in order to focus on saving the town from becoming the creature's new feeding ground. The film was written by Tyler Hissel, directed by Jack Heller, and stars Kevin Durand and Lucas Haas as Sheriff Shields and Deputy Saunders. Set in the fictional upper state New York town of Maiden Woods, and shot in a whirlwind 20 days, Dark Was the Night is a mix of a throwback monster movie and a modern mystery thriller. Great pains are made to keep the creature in the shadows, and gives only glimpses, allowing the tension leading to the reveal to build throughout the film. Clever editing and camera work keeps an edge on the film. You are never entirely sure when and where the creature might turn up, and you definitely have no idea as to what it really is or what it looks like. The film does a good job providing some backstory on our lead characters without a large information dump. Small bits of their stories are told in ways that feel natural and salt and pepper through the first half to two-thirds of the film. You feel that any or all of their stories may be intertwined into the deadly going-ons around them, and I'll leave it to you to watch the film to find out if they do. But I will say that I really enjoyed how it added to the mystery. I had my guesses on what sort of film this was going to end up being, and I had my theories on what was really happening, but those theories had to change multiple times. I love the look of Kevin Durand as a sheriff. Durand is not a small man. Topping out at six and a half feet, he towers over everyone and everything he sits in looks child-sized. But he has to play a man that is near broken after the death of his son. He conveys his mental and emotional fragility through his gruff exterior well, and his self-perceived inability to protect his late son gives him the determination to protect everyone in the town. Lucas Haas plays Deputy Saunders big city New York cop who, after his own trauma, seeks some solace in small town police work. New to town, he hasn't really found his place yet, but as we meet him, he is slowly becoming known and trusted among the residents. His is a role that could have easily been thrown away or phoned in, but Haas takes it seriously. You could tell the story without him, but I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. In the end, the creature is revealed, and after the 90 minutes of anticipation, I'm not sure anything would have been perfect but I'll admit the feeling a little let down. What we saw early on, and only glimpses and flashes in the passing light, were practical monster suit effects. A claw here, or a leg or foot there, but when we get the whole creature, it's mostly digital. I'm sure the budget was low, and maybe a full practical monster suit wasn't feasible, but I really wish it were. The only other quibble I have is in the color shading used throughout the film. The entire film is oversaturated with blues and yellows depending on exterior or interior. I think I understand what the filmmakers are trying to achieve with it, but I'm afraid that they may have just overdone it slightly. I question whether it was really necessary for the exterior shots at all. The movie was filmed in winter as far as I could tell, so the forest and the town already had the cold, stark look to it. Overlaying it all with a too heavy shade of blue just makes it feel like we're seeing the events through tinted sunglasses. Otherwise, Dark Was the Night is an absolutely worthy watch. At the time of recording, it's available on Amazon and included with a Prime subscription. You can also find it free on multiple ad-supported platforms, and if you want to throw a few bucks at it, which it's worth, it's rentable on Apple, Google, and Vudu. As always, I'd love to hear your opinion on Dark Was the Night. Please follow the link in the show notes to all our social media outlets or send me an email to timestrifterspodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.